I'll try it again. There you go. So I know it's going to give you um, an uh, what is it called uh, an XML error. What you need to do is you need to copy the URL. That's all you need to do. Copy the URL. It shows up in there in the browser. Okay, and then take it to Eclipse because that's where you need it. <laughs> Eclipse is the one that needs that URL. And put it here. Location. Make sure that you put it. No, oh, it's. Well, I can't do it because it detects that it's a duplicate location. I already did that. And when you do that and give it a name like Spring Framework Plugin or Spring Source Plugin, whatever. And then when it downloads, I mean, when you when you select it, it will try to connect on the internet. So you have to be connected to the internet, and it will try to download all the different topics that are available for update. Okay? The ones that I downloaded, as you can see, are all the ones that have the Spring IDE version. There are two versions. There is the STS version. That stands for Spring Source Tool Suite, which is, in essence, it's Eclipse, but the Spring guys, the Spring Source guys, took that Eclipse and adapted it to their needs. And then they just have it freely available for everybody to download. It's called the Spring Source Tools Suite. We're not going to use that. We're going to use Eclipse. So Eclipse, the Eclipse version one, it's called Spring IDE. So I want you to check those, the Spring IDE ones, not the STS ones. Spring IDE, Spring IDE. Well, the integrations, for instance, I did not select the integrations. I don't really. And you know what? Even if if you are missing something, Eclipse is trying to. It's going to try to go through what your requirement, what you're requiring to download. And if it makes, if it doesn't make any sense, it will tell you you are missing this library or you're missing this part. So you click on next, and it will say, I'm going to be calculating the requirements and dependencies of what you just asked me to download. And if there's something wrong, it will tell you. You will be missing this or that or the other. And it will try to adjust it for you. So once, once it sees all the stuff that you're trying to download, like, look at this, look at this. I told it to download the AGA DT integration. Well, it determined that the cross-reference tools are needed. So it included them. Now I'm clicking Next. And then this is where you, you accept the terms of the, of the license agreements. Yeah, it's open source, blah, blah, blah. You can look at it. And then Finish, and it will download. Once it downloads, oh, make sure that you click OK because it says you're installing software that contains unsigned content. Nobody signed for it. We trust the guys on Spring Source, so it's fine. Click OK. It downloads the software, installs it, and then you will have to restart your Eclipse so that it sees next time that it boots up it sees those plugins go into Moodle and download the rapid Java source code adapter for MySQL save it wherever you want to save it I'm going to save it into my C Rapid Java. Remember, C Rapid Java is my workspace. And then 
I go there, and I look at it, and this rapid Java, when I decompress it, actually, you know what, I should have put it on the parent folder of rapid Java, which means C drive. <laughs> so I'm going to put it on my C drive. So when you open it, it actually is going to try to create a rapid Java. Okay. And so what's the next step? The next step is for you guys to import it into Eclipse. So once you have downloaded the software, the plugin, the uh, Spring Source plugin, and you have rebooted your Eclipse, I want you to right click on Project Explorer or Package Explorer, whatever you want, and import, import. an existing project into the workspace. Import an existing project into the workspace. So from the general section you will find existing project into the workspace. You tell it what the root directory is. My root directory is Rapid Java off of the C drive. It's going to find a whole bunch of them. So I'm going to deselect them. The one that I want to import from the author is called Timex. Right here, Timex. So select Timex and finish. And this is it. This is the Timex project that we'll be working out of. Now this Timex project most probably has the wrong dependencies. Remember, we have just recently downloaded the latest JDK. We have also downloaded Tomcat. What version of Tomcat did we download? Six something? Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, if you use something different than what I, if you use something different than what I'm using, you're on your own. And you run it. If you use something different than what I'm using, and you run into problems, you're on your own. If you use the same stuff that I'm using, and you run into problems, I might be able to help you. Okay. <laughs> so this Timex. I don't know when is it from this adapted to MySQL Timex. Probably it's from a long time ago that I used a different JDK and a different Tomcat. So that's why it shows with errors. How do I know it shows with errors? Because in, to in uh, Eclipse it shows that it has red X's. That means it has problems. Plus there's a view called Problems View that you can go and expand and you can see that it has a whole bunch of errors. Approved cannot be resolved, blah blah blah, and the accounting controller in here and there. So it has a lot of problems. So how do you fix that? Well in Eclipse you right click on Timex and you go into the build path of the project. And what you want to do is you want to configure the build path. If you go into the <coughs> libraries, They seem to be fine. Project 
libraries. It's looking for a whole bunch of jars. Where? Out of the library folder in Rapid Java, right? And the JRE is the JDK1627, which I believe that's correct. So let me try doing a project clean. Project clean.